Good evening. We're back to Swordbreaker as we attempt to choose our own adventure and make our dreams come true in 54321. Do you have a warm blanket and your favorite cuddly creature with you? I certainly hope so. Because tonight we must start anew. We did not fare very well against the demon. We find ourselves back at the gates. After a long and tiring journey, the hero approached a huge ancient castle from the look of it. The castle had been abandoned many centuries ago, but something gave him a mysterious feeling he wasn't alone. The adventurer saw an open window on the second floor. Which way to go? walk through the gate or climb in through the window we went through the window last time and i'm going to do that again we're actually going to make all the right decisions this time if we can remember it save those lives for the demon it took the hero a lot of effort to climb up to the second floor in his armor now he was in the guard room just above the castle gates it looked like there had been a fight here dead warriors, or rather their skeletons, were scattered on the floor. Suddenly, one of the skeletons moved and tried to stand up, raising his longsword. Make a choice now. Should the adventurer take a running kick at him while the warrior is still on the floor, jump out the window, or wait until he gets up and take it like a man? Yeah, we are going to wait. We did that last time. When the skeleton finally got up, the adventurer raised his sword. Wait, cried the skeleton, leaning on his sword. The hero stopped and looked at the skeleton, bewildered. I am the guard captain of this castle. I can help you avoid the barracks unless you'd like to have a chat with my heartless traitor guardsman. That is, you know, one does not simply walk through the barracks, said the old skeleton. Accept his help. The adventurer accepted the captain's help and they walked through the secret door to the armory. The armory. It was a big chamber with weapon racks and armor stands along the walls apart from the bows, swords, and shields put in order. The armory was a sorry sight with a huge hole in the floor. Then the adventurer saw two doors, one at the far end of the room, one at the right. Should the hero open the door on the right, the other one at the other end, or go and take a look at the weapons? We happen to know that the door to the right is death, and that the door at the end leads to... Well, the next room. Behind the door was another armory with shiny suits of armor hanging on the walls. All of a sudden, one of the gauntlets moved. Should the adventurer take a closer look at the armor or get a move on? We're going to choose and uh, get the heck out of here. Now, I've got to say, the art style in this game is really fantastic it is a comic book brought to life but that's not what we're doing we are doing a speed run the hero got away from the moving armor and went into a long hallway with holes in the walls and a pile of human bones on the floor or should he run or crawl across the floor we crawl through the store the adventurer felt there was something wrong with that hallway and was right about that as he was crawling through the bones giant buzz saws went whizzing from the walls just where the hero's head would have been Penitent man kneels before the Lord. Okay, the hero entered a large smithy. There was a hearth, an anvil, and other tools any smith has. On the walls, the adventurer saw swords, shields, parts of armor, and some weird long pipes. The blacksmith wasn't in. Should the hero walk through the door, which said recreation room, or bang on that strange pipe with his sword? Those strange pipes are nukes. That is death. Go to the rec room. As he encountered the door, the hero, or as he entered the door, the hero saw a sad, bulky man in a blacksmith's apron sitting on a couch. A large sledgehammer was propped nearby. I need your help, friend. Two days ago, I sent my apprentice to the mine to get some uranium ore, but he hasn't come back yet. He must have taken a wrong turn and was caught by the spider. He might still be alive. If you could help me find him, I'll show you the way to the engineer. I have commissions from the Interstellar Confederation to build gazillions of warheads. They're losing the war, you see, and I won't make it on my own. So, are you in? Asked the blacksmith. Yeah, we're going to help him. Follow me. 
I'll show you the way to the mine, said the smith, and led the way. Remember, to get to the spider, take the tunnel on the right. Don't touch the spider. Just rescue the boy and come back as fast as you can. Do as I told you, and you might have a chance to survive. The hero went through the door and quickly locked it behind him. In front of him was a low tunnel propped with wooden supports and a signboard which said, Uranium Mine. It's the 1940s, after all. The tunnel diverged, forming three smaller ones. Which tunnel to choose? The left, the one straight ahead, or the one on the right? We take the tunnel on the right. The right tunnel led the hero to a vast cave covered with cobwebs, with massive cocoons hanging from the ceiling. Go on, or cut one of the cocoons open. We are looking inside the cocoons. Oh, and there he is, looking fairly good for somebody captured by a giant spider. Off the, uh... Mountains of Mordor. The adventurer carefully opened the cocoon and saw a young guy in work clothes. The hero pulled the survivor out of the cocoon and asked, Who are you, and how did you get here? I'm the apprentice to Hans the blacksmith. We forge weapons for the necromancers and build nuclear warheads for the aliens. Hans sent me to the mine to get some uranium ore, but I took a wrong turn, and the spider caught me. Come on, I'll lead you out of here to the smithy, said the apprentice. The adventurer could hardly understand the guy's mumbling, but he had to choose either to follow him or refuse the offer. We go to Hans, which I don't understand, which is just back two pages. But apparently those two pages equal a long secret passage finally led the hero to the apprentice and the apprentice to the blacksmith. You're here. I don't believe it. I thought you were dead, exclaimed Hans. This brave hero has rescued me from the spider's den, said the apprentice. Really? In that case, you have earned my respect and a reward. I can show you the way to our alien allies or send you to the dining hall. So where do you want to go? Uh, to the allies. Hans showed the adventurer the way to the arrival's chamber. And the hero went on down the corridors. The adventurer found himself in a massive hall with a hole in one of the walls. Among some rubble, he saw a large metal disc with shining lights around its surface. There was smoke coming out of the saucer. It had been clearly damaged. Next to it, there was a strange, greenish, big-eyed creature sitting on a rock. It looked very sad. I'd actually say he looks more angry. Should the adventurer sneak past the creature or talk to it? We're going to talk. The cavalcade of poor decisions got us actually to the portal. The hero decided to talk and went up to the creature. What is your name and where do you come from? Asked the hero. Greetings, earthling. I am Zet, one of the magicates, a humanoid race. I deliver ammunition for Alien Tech Interstellar Corporation, E.T. for short. In case you're not aware, there's a war going on between the Interstellar Confederation and the Free Planets Coalition. The Confederation is losing at the moment. We don't have enough weapons. So our corporation has commissioned Hans, the local blacksmith, to supply nuclear rockets for the IC. I've come here to pick up the rockets, but on my way to the castle, something went wrong with the autopilot and my spaceship crashed into the wall instead of landing in the courtyard. Now the ship is badly damaged. I've sent out an SOS, and you will have to wait for our guys to respond, said the alien. The adventurer could hardly follow Zet. Yeah, no shit. The, the, the plot of this game, using air quotes, is all over the place. The castle hasn't seen life forever. It's been abandoned, but it's full of aliens and blacksmiths and giant spiders and skeleton warriors so far. Why am I telling you this? It's as if I tried to explain the corpuscular and wave theory of light to you. A countryman like you won't get it anyway. The only thing you could do for me is clear the debris, said Zet. 
Should the adventurer help him pretend to be really busy or tell him to get lost? I've got to give him credit for the techno babble. I mean, corpuscular and wave theory of light? That, that is some scientific BS. We're going to help him. Okay, I can help you with that, said the adventurer. So they set to work together, the alien from one side, the hero from the other. They are almost done when the spaceship suddenly skidded down the rubble toward the adventurer. Should he run for his life or warn Zet? We are giving Zet the heads up. As soon as the hero called Zet, the alien pressed a button on his suit, and the adventurer got teleported to the other side end of the room. Or teleported into the other end of the room. Thanks for your help. Just give me a shout if you need me, okay? Said Zet. Now the hero could go on. Oddly enough, to a bedroom. A boudoir. The next moment, the hero found himself in a spacious, luxurious room with a magnificent bed next to the wall. This was the chamber of Lord Neo the Fourth himself. The adventurer felt some dark vibes from this place. Neo, it turned out, was into BDSM. It was as if someone was watching him. What should he do next? Rummage through the wardrobe for something useful, or lie down in the bed and take a nap? We're going to get some sleep. We know where this leads. Wowza. <laughs> uh, she could suck you, bust me any time. Uh, the adventurer lay down on the magnificent bed and fell asleep in his dreams. He was in a strange place called the Astral World. Once inside, the hero found himself in a spectacular otherworldly room. Suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared before him out of thin air, beckoning him. Should he approach her? <laughs> yep, we're going to call Zed. <laughs> I mean, you've got option one, option two. Skull. <laughs> We're calling Zet. The alien appeared in the middle of the astral room, and without thinking twice, he shot Succubus with his blaster. The plasma beam hit the demoness in the chest, burning a huge hole through it. The temptress fell on the floor and began to dissolve. As soon as she was gone, Zet pushed a button on his spacesuit and disappeared. The astral room faded away, and the hero found himself back on the Lord's bed. He thanked the alien in his mind and went on down the castle's hallway. And now we're back at the portal room. Alas, finally, the adventurer entered a dark room. In the corner there was a man in black armor sitting on a chair. The room didn't have any more doors. In the other corner he noticed a glowing magical portal. This must be the portal room. Who are you? asked the hero. I'm Sylvester McCoy, the Sixth Doctor. I'm also the Knight of the Temple of Fate. It is my job to protect the portal from the necromancers, said the man. So the people that Hans and his squirrely apprentice were making weapons for. Hans is working actually both sides of this. Oh, I was just looking for them. And for the treasury. Will you let me through, asked the adventurer. Only you can choose your path. How did you prove yourself? Who did you help? Did you kill a lot? Or maybe you have a yellow streak down your back. I can read you like a book you know. This room will lead you to your destiny. Prepare yourself and enter the portal, said the knight. And the skull. So... The hero entered the glowing portal, and the reality warped around him. When the adventurer opened his eyes again, he found himself in a small room with a window. This must be one of the castle towers. What kind of trial is that? The hero wondered. Then he heard the Knight of the Temple of Fate. You are a brave and kind-hearted warrior. You have helped in many in this castle, and even spared some in the battle. So in this trial you deserve... You will have to face the astral demon that lives in this tower and keeps a kidnapped princess as his prisoner. If you defeat the demon, you will bask in glory for years to come, said the knight. The next moment, the skies opened. Actually, it's not the skies, it's just a portal. And the astral demon with a flaming sword entered the room through the space rift should the hero attack the demon or talk. So, we tried talking. That killed us. We're going to attack. The adventurer rushed into the attack, 
but some mysterious force lifted him up in the air. It was the work of the astral demon and his magic power. Of course he's got magic power. Why not? As the demon was getting closer and closer, the hero had to decide what to do next. Throw his sword at the monster or wait till it's near. We're going to wait this time. Throwing the sword did not work out for us. We got our game over last night. The adventurer waited patiently for the astral demon to come closer, and when he did, the hero plunged his sword into the demon and crushed his skull with the sword breaker to make sure he was dead. The astral demon started to vanish in the air. The spell was lifted, and the hero tumbled down on the floor. The adventurer gathered his strength and entered the second room in the tower. Inside, he saw an iron door with a huge padlock. Behind the door, he heard someone crying. Should the adventurer knock it down with his sword or pick it with a nail? If the princess turns out to be one of Zet's species, I'm going to die laughing. <sighs> Let's go on ahead. Well, we've got a few lives here. Use the sword. Nope. The adventurer raised his sword and thrust at the lock. That's when he realized he'd made a huge mistake. The padlock gave him an electric shock, turning his body into barbecue. Whew. Hope he dry rubbed. That was the demon's dirty trick. Okay. So, we pick. What if it's a trap, thought the hero, and picked up a nail. A couple of minutes later, he managed to open the door. He entered a tiny room and saw a gorgeous girl in magnificent dress lying on her bed. She stopped, uh, she stopped crying and looked at the adventurer. Who are you? What do you need? She asked cautiously. I've come for you. There's no time to explain. Come on. I have to take you to a safe place, said the adventurer. But I can't leave the room. The Lord of Necromancers will find me anyway, she said. Right, then I'll go slit the old perv's throat and come back, said the adventurer and headed for the exit. Wait, let me give you my blessing, or you won't sustain the necromancer's curse, by the way. I'm Princess Anastasia, she said. Should the adventurer agree? I think we should agree. But we'll find out tomorrow night. Good night, children. So, here's a video and a subscribe link. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, comment, all that goodness. Thank you.